I was blessed by a lot that I just heard. One of the things that we just heard about was the scale of, um, I believe it, the way I see the scale is how much we love God as opposed to how much we love everything else in our life. Can you put a measure on you, how much we love God or how much we love our families? Can we measure how much God loves us? I think we can, um, I think from the Bible we can put a measure on these things. Um, and the measure, I believe, is how much we're willing to sacrifice for somebody else, how much we're willing to sacrifice for God. I believe that's how we can define how much we love God, is what we're willing to give up of ourselves that actually costs us something. That's how much we love God. I believe um, John 3.16, the verse we all know, um, that's the scale of God's love. That's the measure of God's love for us. For he s God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, how much did God love the world? What was the measure of God's love for us? He gave his only begotten son. That's how much he sacrificed for us. Um, we, God put a scale and he put all of his, everything he owned on that scale for us. And so I believe that we can measure ourselves in the same way as what am I willing to give up for Christ? I, realistically, I, I don't think that um, God has uh, put us in any situations here, especially in this country, where we actually have to give up our physical lives. Um, I'm not really a fan of these stories where somebody comes into a church with a gun and says, who's a Christian? Stand up. And Because I've never heard of that actually happening. I just hear these theories and all that. Um, but God does tell us, tell me to give up body, pieces of my body, mostly three body parts, my tongue, my left eye, and my right eye. Realistically, these are the, uh, God does tell me, put these on the scale. <laughs> this is what I want from you today. So we can, we can realistically, every day, give up, as the Bible says, um, carry our cross daily, give up sacrifice of ourselves, um, and show our love to God in, in these ways by sacrificing things that cost us. It's, you, you all know it's really hard to hold back our tongue sometimes. And um, we can prove our love to God by sacrificing, cutting off our tongue <laughs> when we need to cut it off. And um, so uh, I think if we, most of us would agree that if we were going to try to define what a disciple is, um, we would agree with the verses that Jesus says it in multiple places, that a, a disciple is someone who denies themselves and um, carries their cross. In other words, they're following, carries their cross, follow Je follows Jesus. They're denying themselves daily. Um, so I, I want to be a, I, I'm sure all of us are here because we want to be sold out disciples who follow Jesus like that. Um, but I've, I've seen there are times in my life where I think that I'm a dis being a disciple, that I'm following Jesus, and really I'm not because of some reason or another. One of the reasons may be I'm not carrying my cross. I'm trying to follow Jesus, but I'm not really, I'm not really carrying my cross. Um, another reason may be I'm carrying a cross, but I'm following something else. Um, and so I just wanted to, um, I wanted to be clear in my own life. Uh, am I really carrying the cross like I should be and following Christ like I should be? And I wanted to look in the Bible of, and look at three examples of um, some folks who thought that they were disciples, but it turned out that they really weren't for some reason or another. And um, the first one is in Matthew chapter 7. And um, it blessed me to th consider the lives of these folks because I don't want to be um, come to the end of my life and have Jesus say to me, you weren't really a disciple. You thought you were, you were carrying your cross and following me, but you weren't really. Um, and so here's an example of one of the um, one person like that. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-one: "Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter." Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So I, um, I picture kind of a person who loves to um, think that they're following God and loves to follow God in certain ways, doing many things for God, um, probably going to church every Sunday and maybe even excited to read the Bible, excited about truth, kind of like Herod was to, excited to hear um, John the Baptist preached, but was still unsaved. Um, but Jesus said here, the root 
the root was um, this person didn't do the will of the Father in heaven. He was basically still living for himself. He was trying to follow Jesus, but he wasn't carrying a cross. And so I saw that as um, a way that I can be deceived, thinking that I'm following Jesus by measuring my love for God, by, um, by looking at things that I'm doing, um, actions and outward things. But Jesus is always saying, look at the um, inward. Are you, do you really want to um, follow God's will? If so, then God's will is primarily to cleanse yourself. Get rid, be, be, um, conform to the image of Christ inwardly. Nobody else will see that. Don't judge your own life on anything else. I remember one time, I think I've shared this before, one time I went on this um, house building trip to Mexico and I thought I was serving God so wonderfully and then at the end of it I found myself complaining because it was just a really hard trip and all my friends got to be on an easy house and got to have shorter, easier work and I was on this house on a hill carrying up sand up and down the hill and um, in the sun, no shade, and um, no bathroom for a block away and uh, I was complaining at the end of it and God was like saying to me, um, this was, you were, you were denying yourself, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> so you weren't really following me. You were carrying a cross, but it was a cross you were following your own um, desire to have fun, I guess. It's, that's, as long, when I look back at it, I think I just really wanted to go and have fun with my friends. It was a vacation. It wasn't a, for me, it was a vacation. It wasn't a missions trip. So um, now when I look back on it, I, um, I don't say, oh, my missions trip to Mexico. I say, oh, my vacation with friends to Mexico. <laughs> um, and so these types of things, uh, we can deceive ourselves. I, um, I, it's very easy to, to look at our lives and think that we're doing so wonderfully, um, such, living such a great life. Look, I'm going to church all the time. I don't even miss a Sunday. Look at these other people. They miss Sundays. Um, I'm there every Sunday. I'm even there on time. And look at this. I help set up. And uh, I don't think I've ever been. These types of things God's saying, throw that in the trash. Uh, <laughs> you um, Make sure that your, uh, your motive is clean. And um, don't be trying to lift up your own... Um, ego or thinking that you're living for me just because you're um, doing all these external things correctly. Um, are you living for my will inwardly when nobody, nobody else sees it in secret? Um, it was like Judas who, uh, I think Judas was, I think he, I believe that he was, um, uh, when he said, um, shouldn't this money, shouldn't this perfume be sold and given to the poor when Mary was pouring the perfume on Jesus? And um, I believe, I, I don't know, maybe Judas was sincere, like really thought the poor, I know he wanted to steal some of it, but maybe he thought that it was just a waste. <laughs> um, and uh, Judas, maybe in a sense, was calling the disciples as a whole to deny themselves, calling Mary, Jesus, you should be denying yourself here. <laughs> but um, what's the point of denying ourselves if we're not following Jesus? Jesus? We want God to be pleased and happy, and the reason why that sacrifice on Mary's part was so good is because Jesus is the, um, the highest calling that we can give up our lives for. Um, not for the poor, not for our family, not for ourselves. <clears throat> so um, uh, I, I remember in just one other illustration in regard to this that um, not looking at the outward things but looking at um, the carrying our cross daily and looking at it, are we giving up of ourselves. Uh, um, Brother Zach had shared a story. I don't know if it was true, but as far as I can remember, the, um, the story was about a husband who really wanted to get it. It was his wife's birthday, and he, he wanted to get his wife a wonderful gift, but he, the rest of the year he just treated his wife really badly. And so um, she, he said, asked his wife, what do you want me to get you for your birthday? And she said, just treat me for my birthday. I just want you to start treating me with the same respect that you treat and the same courtesy that you treat strangers that come to the door and knock on the door asking for something or soliciting. And um, basically that, that really hits home. It's like there um, we can try to look at these things that we're doing every once in a while but not carry our cross daily every day. It's like she was saying, um, you can buy me an expensive new Lexus or something, but I'd rather have, have you stop yelling at me. <laughs> I'd rather see a smile um, on your face at to me when you come home than to give me the cold shoulder when you're in a bad mood because you had a long day at work. Stop being rude to me, these types of things. Um, and I see that uh, God wants the same thing. It's like, forget about all these external types of um, what man glories in and thinks is great. Just um, uh, live like Christ. Um, try to cleanse yourself inwardly. Don't worry, if, don't care if anybody else looks. Um, and so that's, um, that's the kind of... Uh, the kind of person I see here in this uh, Matthew 7, 21, is a person who focuses on external but doesn't really give up which cost them something. Um, so uh, the, next, uh, the next one was the Matthew chapter 19. 
Next example. <clears throat> I'll just read from Matthew chapter 19, uh, verse 16. Uh, Someone came to him and said, um, this is a story of the the rich young ruler, I think. Um, He said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? And he said to him, Why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep my commandments. And he said to him, which ones? And Jesus listed out the commandments. Then the young man said to him, all these things I have kept, what am I still lacking? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. Um, The the point here I didn't want to focus on was um, money, but I just wanted to focus on the fact that this um, this person thought he was pretty good already. So I think that's a, one, a false disciple who thinks, yeah, I can carry my cross and follow Jesus, but um, I don't need to labor that hard. Um, I don't, I don't really uh, have too much to carry because I'm still pretty good. I've kept most of the commandments, um, but there, I believe that um, when it comes down to it. Uh, person like this not aren't going to be really willing to die to themselves when it comes down to it. A person who thinks they're pretty good has things, uh, they've got themselves set into a comfortable life, but when it comes down to costing them something, they, they just want to live for themselves still. And um, it's, uh, It reminds me of Romans chapter 3 where it says there's none righteous, not even one. I, I think a disciple um, should have such a desperation that I'm so wicked inside I um, I need to f- I have no other choice but to take up a cross and follow Christ and whatever it costs me I need to be different um, I'm desperate to be rid of myself and filled with Christ and be like Christ so I want to follow him um, I don't I, I don't see this man as desperate he was um, he had a desire to be a disciple but he was it did, I don't see a desperation there he, um, he so I, I see in myself um, I've always got to keep the mindset that uh, I the highest calling for me is to be like Christ, and I, there's nothing good in me. I've got to have the mindset that I've just got to die, 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 because there's nothing good there. Um, then the last, uh, the last example of a person um, who thinks maybe that they're a disciple, but um, probably is deceiving themselves, was in Roman, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, verse 3, uh, Paul is talking about a type of person who for men who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared in by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good. Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. So I, here I see a type of person who um, wants to carry some type of cross and wants to burden others with carrying some type of cross, but it's not a cross that's following Jesus. They think they are following Jesus, but they're they're carrying some type of cross and denying themselves. I don't think anybody who um, abstains from marriage can, uh, you can say that they're not denying themselves. Uh, There's a lot of people that abstain from marriage and eating certain foods for different reasons, but, uh, and they're denying themselves, but the difference is they're not denying themselves for the sake of Christ. They're denying themselves for some other reason. And um, so I've seen that um, a real disciple is someone who not only denies themselves, but denies himself for the sake of Christ. Um, and um, I think I can look back on my life and think of a lot of times where I've um, denied myself. I've tried, for some reason or another, I tried to give up something, and I thought that that was what God wanted me to do. But it was really, when I look back on it, it I don't think it was really for the sake of Christ. I think I was, um, in a lot of ways I was deceiving myself and um, I, I remember a story about some um, uh, Martin Luther who was he would sleep, he would sleep in the cold on rocks and stuff because he thought that he was pleasing God by um, you know just beating his flesh and all this stuff but then when he looked back on it he um, saw how the folly in that that it wasn't it, Jesus doesn't get anything doesn't get any honor by us sleeping on the ground <laughs> if we have a bed laying next to us. Jesus doesn't get anything out of that, but he, he does get something out of it if we 
um, hold our eyes when uh, there's a, something bad on the internet that pops up. He, if we um, hold our tongue when there's a temptation, if we refrain from saying something when we're tempted to build up ourselves in pride. Jesus, it says, when a sinner repents from sin, that the heaven, all of heaven rejoices. And that's the point. Um, sin is the point. It's not just um, doing some type of pointless thing, carrying a cross just for the sake of carrying a cross, but it's carrying a cross for the sake of Christ. And, um, I, and I think that's the key word right there, the key phrase, for the sake of Christ, that um, I thought about lastly. It's uh, Matthew chapter 10, um, verse 39 says, He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. And that's kind of what I, stood out to me. It was losing our lives for Christ's sake, not for our own sake, not just for the sake of losing our lives. There's no, as we've said before, there's no honor in asceticism where we, um, we give up television and we give up meat and we give up um, heat our, in our house. There's no um, honor in asceticism. Um, I, there's a verse in the Bible where Paul's talking to slaves. He says, if you have chance for freedom, take it. <laughs> but if you don't, then live for God in the calling, whatever he's called you. Um, and so I've, uh, I've seen there that um, the, um, the primary ambition is to lay down my life for the sake of Christ. I lay down my tongue for the sake of Christ. I lay down my eyes for the sake of Christ. I lay down my ambition for money, for an easy life, for a comfortable life, um, all for just because, the, because I want Jesus to be honored and I love God. Um, and uh, I'll just end with one other verse that um, kind of says that, and that's Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. It says, therefore, we also have as our ambition, whether at home or, at, or absent, to be pleasing to him. That's our ambition in life, is to be pleasing to God, to give up ourselves, deny ourselves, not for any pointless thing, but for his sake. <clears throat>